So here we are the morning of June 9th. And yesterday we learned that there are seven indictments that have been handed down um, for Trump. So we know that there's like a conspiracy one under the Espionage Act. There's um, willful retention of documents. We don't know what all the charges are yet. So the big hubbub this morning is that Eileen Cannon, whose name, you know, will go down in infamy, um, has been assigned to this case. And, you know, the question is whether she is able to retain the case, whether they try to get her, um, you know, excused, whether she recuses herself. Um, so that's kind of the buzz about what's going on. Apparently, Walt Nada, who is that sort of body man of, of Trump's, it feels as if he is one of the co-conspirators in terms of, you know, not handing over the documents or, or you know, moving boxes, whatever went on there. So... <clears throat> I thought that I would just simply ask Spirit <laughs> to just give us a little bit of, you know, guidance, um, heads up, whatever it is. You know, it was interesting to me when they were talking about the timeline yesterday um, that it was like August when that subpoena was, was um, presented and acted upon. And it took until November for Jack Smith to sort of get the files. Um, but if you think about it, that's really actually been moving along fairly quickly. I mean, it's not ever going to be fast enough for us, but it has been moving along quite quickly. And of course, the Republicans are by and large up there screaming their heads off about, you know, abuse of power and the Justice Department's out of control and whatever. More rational people are saying no one is above the law. And that means no one. So it's going to be interesting to sort of watch those theatrics play out. But I'm going to keep this short and sweet. So Spirit, what can you tell us now that the indictments have come down against Donald Trump? What can not only the United States as a country, but by extension, the allies of the United States um, and unfortunately, the enemies of the United States. Um, what can you tell us so that we have some clarity or understanding about what this looks like as it moves forward? So, sorry, I just want to get one of my little wands here. So it it. There may be some back and forth, but it looks like Judge Cannon will not end up sort of adjudicating this case. So from what I understand, the actual indictments on Tuesday, that's going to go before the judge who um, <clears throat> issued the, the um, subpoena um, to search the property, the, the bat. And apparently that judge have, has a fair amount of say in terms of what goes in and out um, in terms of evidence and that kind of stuff. So we shall see. But what they're showing me is like they're showing me her face with a red X across it. So somewhere down the line, she's going to be excused or recused, but it doesn't look like she is going to end up kind of adjudicating that case. So that for right now is good news. Um, for reasons I don't understand exactly, I keep seeing the month of March. So I don't know what that means. Um, but is it possible that that's sort of a start time for the trial? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I did get the timing of the indictments pretty darn correct. I said it was either later this week or early the following week. And so here we are. So I'm not sure what the march is about, but there's definitely going to be some forward movement, et cetera, march. Um, and even though that feels like a lifetime away, it's not really. Okay. Um, 
And in terms of how, and apparently this morning there were two lawyers that have resigned and a, a, somebody else has come in who apparently at least has some experience with these kinds of charges, because really the lawyers he had were completely ill-equipped to, you know, to deal with this. I mean, he had one lawyer on the news, I guess this morning, um, and he was talking about the Presidential Act and how, you know, Presidents can do what they want with documents, completely disregarding the fact that that is an act and what he has done is broken the law. Um, but, you know, it's like, oh, look over here, you know, never mind what's going on over here. Um, and so that kind of distraction, we can expect a lot of that in the coming weeks and months. Certainly, you're going to get it from the Republicans. There's going to be a lot of whataboutisms. And, you know, again, well, what about the fact that Joe Biden and um, Mike Pence had documents. Well, the big difference is that they handed them over right away. They were like, oh my God, we shouldn't have these. Come get them. Uh, as opposed to Trump, who not only kept them for 18 months, but to, to, to last week was yelling and screaming about he had every right. They're his documents. He doesn't have to return them. So, you know, you can't go whataboutism except they're going to do it, okay? So you can expect a lot of that kind of energy um, coming out of the Republicans. You know, they're referring to this as, um, you know, Joe Biden's administration. And in fact, um, yesterday it, it did come out that um, Merrick Garland did not actually sign off on this. The decision was completely in Jack Smith's hands. And so it all of this is connected to the special counsel. It actually is removed from Merrick Garland. Um, and apparently that's how that special counsel sort of um, the guidelines or whatever were, were written. So that's very interesting. So, Sarah, can you tell me how Trump's doing today? Oh, incredulous. He is incredulous. There was a part of him that truly, truly, even as things started ramping up and sort of he could feel the walls closing in a little bit, he really didn't believe that anybody would dare to indict a former president. And, of course, in his head, he's still the current president, so even more so. But he, there was a part of him that just really could never wrap his head around it. And so now he he's sort of in a state of shock. He's incredulous. He's angry. He wants to know why his lawyers didn't better prepare him for this. Um, so there's a lot going on behind the scenes. You know, even I didn't watch um, the address or the video that he put out yesterday, but he was sort of, you know, what I saw of it, he was kind of like deranged. He was rambling on. He was, you know, he did perfect things. So he's still publicly sort of in this state of denial. Apparently, it took about 20 minutes before he started fundraising. He made the announcement that the indictments were going to come on Tuesday, and 20 minutes later, he had kicked into his fundraising gear. So, as for him, it's he's sort of in shock. He can't believe it. And then the sort of overriding motivation or energy is, how do I benefit from this? How do I make money from this? So, of course, the... Sorry, dog barking. Okay, um, I think he's quiet now. So, um, yeah, so you can expect... You know, they keep asking him if somebody's like trying to steal our grass or something. That he just gets in his little spit. I think he'll be quiet. So, um, public presentation is going to be very, very different than what is sort of going on in the background. Okay, um, he's not handling this very well. Just from an emotional level. There's a lot of rage, a lot of anger, but there's shock is it, sort of the overwhelming emotion I'm getting is he just, he just can't believe it. 
um, because he really did believe that being the former president was going to protect him. So, and, and frankly, there was a lot of Republicans who were sprouting the same line. Um, and so we know that he, he likes to live in a bubble and he especially likes to um, pay attention to the people who are saying the things that he most wants to hear. So, Spirit, what else can you tell us? Okay. So right now what they're saying is everybody... Just calm down and take a big breath. This is not a episode of Law or an Order or any other sort of legal show. This is the law in a country, and it is going to unfold with the, the diligence and the care that it is supposed to. There's not going to necessarily be preferential treatment, certainly as this case goes on and gets, you know, as it unfolds. Um, the Florida courts are not known for allowing things to drag out. Apparently, they're known as a, a rocket docket, right? They move things along fairly quickly. And so... It feels like this is going to move along, but if you're thinking it's going to be all wrapped up by like November, stop. It's going to take several months. We're definitely going to go into spring of the new year. So Spirit, can you give me some idea of what is going to happen to Trump's approval rating as this unfolds? Is he yet going to lose ultimately support because not right now he won't everybody's like up in arms but as this continues to unfold and unfold his numbers are going to drop a little bit it's really going to be more about whether the other people who are running for the nomination sort of how aggressive they become in terms of going after him or not going after him that actually could have sort of a bit of a significance in terms of um, his own approval rating numbers. And it, it, the other thing that they want to remind you of, even though it's sort of everybody's worst nightmare, that there was going to end up being another face-off between Biden and Trump, in a lot of ways, it's the best case scenario because there's not a way in hell that Trump can beat Biden. It just can't happen. But it makes the Biden uh, run for presidency a little bit more tenuous if there's actually somebody who gets nominated who, you know, is a functioning, thinking, somewhat rational human being. Um, and so in a lot of ways, even though it's what everybody doesn't want, um, if Trump were to secure the nomination for the Republicans, it's not, the, the world is not ending, okay? Okay, so for now, that's sort of what I know. It's, it's they're asking everybody to just take a deep breath. There's going to be things coming up that everybody's going to get frazzled about. Just breathe through it because this is going to end up being um, an incredibly just and very fair sort of trial um, because that's the way it needs to be. And that is what ultimately is going to end up happening. And they're, they're just giving me a little peek and they're saying he is most likely to be found guilty of four, at least four of the seven indictments. Okay, 
That's what I know. I hope you've had a chance to look at the Ukrainian video that came out earlier today. Um, th this is it for the week. Um, take good care of yourself. Have a good weekend. And um, I will look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye now.